connecting to the cloud. And I believe that we are recording right now. And so, Edward, you're now on the Earl Jones Show. How are oh you? Oh, my goodness. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I feel so, so, like, lucky to be on, on such an exquisite show. <laughs> it totally is. So, you guys, so listen up. This is Earl, your host of the Earl Jones Show. And I finally got husband, father-to-be, um, CEO um, of the Apogee Construction Company, which is a construction company here in the San Francisco Bay Area, specializing in custom home building and also big renovation projects, right? Um, and what you guys should know about Edward Ciccarelli is that he is a major in the United States um, Army Reserve. Air Force Reserve. Reserve. Come Air on. Force Reserve. <laughs> it's Air Force. I'm I an engineer for them. <laughs> I know that he looks good in BDUs. That's all. Oh, right. I Battery said, will get you everywhere. Yes. I put it out there. I said it. I said it. Now, I do know that he has a degree in engineering. I know he's, he's like super, super, you know, like awesome. But I do know that he's expecting his first boy, his first son, his first son. So, Edward, let's talk about the baby first. So let's talk about the baby. Oh, and by the way, I may eat some Captain Crunch berries while we are doing okay. this. That's okay. Crunch bomb. Uh huh. Let's talk about the little part, the little purse that's coming. Oh my goodness! I think um, I think construction might be easier than raising a kid. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you put the when you put the window in the wrong place, you can always move it. Uh, you know, take it down and move it over. But when you you raise your kid wrong, then that's going to be a challenge. Um, so Ethan is um, right now trending on the seven pound range, um, and we're probably going to have to induce early May. Uh, April 28th uh, versus the the coveted May 4th that I really, really wanted him to come out in because I'm a little bit of a Star Wars, um, Star Wars geek. Um, so oh, made the yeah, point yeah. with you. Got it. But we don't want him. I mean, if we wait that long, he could be easily eight pounds or more. And my poor wife, she would probably break my arm if, if she had to push that much weight. <laughs> <laughs> now, Ethan is your baby, your firstborn. Yes. No. And then how did you come up with the name Ethan? I want to hear, I want everybody to hear the story about how you came up with the name Ethan for your baby. I'm so excited. Well, well the funny thing is, um, well, I mean, I'm half Italian, half Filipino. So I wanted naturally an Italian name, like a Giovanni or a Maximilian or something along those lines. Well, my wife's family, they're not all Italian and they took all the good Italian names. So days and days and days, thousands of names later, we finally agreed upon um, Ethan. I was kind of going a little bit more traditional Roman type names and stuff like that, but that, it just seemed out of context. So funny enough, he's now got the same initials as I do. So my custom made shirts with my initials on the cuff get to go to him. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Congratulations on the first baby. Now, I will confess, I'm a little jealous because, you know, when babies are bored, they're cute. You can hold them like little footballs the whole nine yards. But, whoa, whoa, speaking of footballs, are you going to have them play in sports? Like, do you guys even, have you talked about that yet? Like, you know, I want him to be, I want him to be an astronaut because I actually wanted to fly, but my eyes did not allow me to. I was supposed to. I mean, I graduated top in my class and potentially have the ability to go, you know, to go fly, but um, my eyes did not allow me to do that. So I would love for him to do those kind of things as well as still, you know, ride horses and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to push him too hard to what I think I want him to be. Um, oh. I'm going to let him try to discover that. Awesome. Now you said, wait, so let's talk about your military so that everybody understands that he's an Air Force major. He's currently... Reserve, because that's Air why Force I get to grow this. <laughs> major, yes. Now you and your business is registered as a um, as a military as a veteran-owned business, right? Yes. So, what? So, in the Air Force, what do you do? I want people to know about what you do in the Air Force. Um, so, I used to be an engineer for them. So, we did everything from air base build to building new facilities for the for the base. 
Um, when I was overseas, we were helping with the coin aspect. So we did roads, bridges, hospitals, schools during the day, and then our team provided security in our villages at night. Um, now I've played, I'm playing more of a strategic role. So I work for PACAF, which is a subcomponent to uh, PACOM, so Pacific Command. Okay. So what that means is anything that happens in the Pacific, I get called up um, as a reservist and I get to help backfill the team to help run whatever happens out there, whether it's um, working some sort of plan or whatever incident happens, whether that is a, a kinetic incident or a humanitarian disaster response, that kind of stuff. So All that's right. what I do now. Cool. And you've been with the Air Force Reserves for how long? I think since 2010, 11. Wow. So you've been um, making it possible for us to enjoy the peace, the luxury of peace in the United States. Thank you. Well, it's a team effort. I think we, we as also non-military people, get to help, help with that, right? Because it's a constant competition out there as to who's on top of the mountain. And the way you treat your fellow citizens um, reflects greatly upon you know, the greatness of our country, so to speak, right? Yes, thank you for that. But I brought you on the show because as a new, you know, soon to be new dad, right? Veteran owned business, you're in the construction business. I want to talk to you about specifically, how are you, are you and your business managing, you know, the coronavirus and all that other stuff? Like, I, I want to hear about how, you know, Apogee Construction is taking care of customers, how you're taking care of your employees, the whole nine yards. Because I because I think people, we, we hear so much negative stuff in the news, but I'm trying to put something out there that's positive. Like, like this is how people are winning. This is how people are thriving. So let's start with your company. How are you helping people and projects that were started before this came? And how are you managing that process? What does that look like? Let's, let's put something first about my team and I'll talk about my um, my partners and, and customers. I think uh, everything starts with a team, right? Having a good team. So the good thing about it is with the construction industry booming as fast as it was and as hot as it was, we were just bringing on board people, people, people. And, you know, at times you don't really have the time to fully train them. So this pause in the industry has actually been a benefit for us. So it's allowing us to do what we're doing now, Zoom. Right? right, so we are we are in the process of putting together all this training material for all my new employees, new and new and existing, as well as sharpening some of our processes. So that way, when we go green, as in when it's time to move, we we can go fast, right? So we're providing, and and it also gives us the ability to pay some of our workers, um, because I I mean, let's face it, they they're they're suffering a lot because they're not able to to work uh, to, and bring home paychecks to their families. So this is a great excuse for us to be able to pay them by saying, hey, let's get on the chat um, and let's provide some training to you with regards to the tools that we're gonna use and the processes. And then they can also sit down and help us build our schedules moving forward. Because right now everything is a, all of our schedules are kind of, well, it's up in the air, we don't know. But, but, but at the same time, while we're sitting here, we can project what that's going to look like, assuming, you know, X that we're going to start right. on this day. So, you know, I, I like to build a schedule with my team. So that way we all are on, in agreement versus me building the schedule and telling them that they have, they have. To do it. Got um, it. I love the fact that you said that you're finding ways to keep your employees, you know, engaged by doing the trainings and the zoom. So that way you can still give them some type of pay to support them during this crisis. So that's really, really, really good because you hear a lot of people, you hear the unemployment rate numbers and you're just going. So mm -hmm. congratulations to that. I, I even have a lot of people calling me right now saying, do you have work? Do you have work? And it's, it's kind of gone the opposite. Whereas before you had to, you had to scrape around to find workers. Now it's like everybody. So I'm kind of curious what's going to happen when green goes, right? Is everybody going to still be able to go back to their old jobs or are people going to be running around like, uh, you know, chicken with his head chopped off trying to figure out where to fit in? Right. I, know, I do know that there are several projects that are being canceled. Um, I, I luckily have not had any of those happen. Most of my projects are on hold right now. Mm -hmm. um, 
So what we're doing with the customer is the team and I, we're building the schedule to kind of give them an idea of what it's going to look like. So to manage their expectations, right? Uh, and that, that helps us um, coordinate also together, like for pieces that they have to provide, um, whether it's material or equipment, they can kind of project when that's going to happen. So, so that's some of the things we're doing with our customers, as well as being a little creative with how we can potentially start work. So, I mean, if you look at some of the shutdown, some of that is um, got to do with uh, low-income housing, as well as anything that's safety related. So, for example, we have to do a seismic retrofit. Well, it's somewhat of a seismic retrofit for one of our projects. So, right. we're getting an engineer to write up a letter saying, hey, you know, we really do need to keep moving on this because, you know, the house is somewhat not stable. Right. So we're working through that process and then, you know, um, potentially going to get the approval from the city. At the end of the day, it's going to be the city to, to give us the green light or red light. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of some of the things that we're doing right now with our customers and our employees in order to stay busy. I mean, even though work's not working, we're, uh, you know, construction's not progressing, there is always something to do. There is always something to do. And then, um, well, I just, I was just wholly forgot to ask you what I was going to ask you was this cereal. So y'all should know, like, <laughs> um, so since you're in the military, I know I was going to ask you now, this is a personal question and you don't have to answer this, but how are, like, what are you doing for workout? Like, cause you like to go to the oh, gym. Gosh, yes. Like, I remember how you used to, you talk about going to the gym all the time. Like you're at the gym, like at what, five, six o'clock in the morning or something like that. Yeah, my wife and I were doing it at four thirty-five o'clock. Wait, wait, your pregnant wife? Well, I mean, she's kind of slowed down a little bit. A lot okay. of it. A so, lot how of it. are you guys <laughs> keeping yourselves healthy, like during this time frame? Like, what are you working out? Are you working outside? Are you walking? Like, what are you doing? So we are doing some walking. We're doing, you know, walking around the area, and then of course, when we see somebody there, it's almost like in the movies, like where you see the zombie, and you're like, oh, gotta go left. So we do that just to make sure that we avoid other people. Um, who are out walking also. So mm -hmm. we do walks. Um, we are turning up a little bit of the, sa the salsa, the cumbia, the zumba, all that kind of stuff. So that's a little, that's going on a little bit. I will not video that. It's not, for, it's not for anybody else's eyes. Yeah, um, saying, come on, can you, can you shake it? Come on, shake it. Shake it. Come on, get it with it. Put yeah. away. <laughs> um, I, I, I have some stuff here, like uh, some bands that are helping out, a pull up bar. But it's not the same as just, you know, picking up heavy things. So sometimes you just got to do that. But it's helping manage any stress. And then, of course, of the, you know, with everything you see in the news, with the way the economy is trending, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's a little bit of uncertainty in there. So the best way to manage uncertainty is to go do something where you're not really stressing and thinking about it, where you're able to, to, uh, to do something kinetic. <laughs> to use a military term where you can, you know, um, kind of like the old school days where you just go get a hammer or a ax and chop wood type thing to help relax. At least uh, that's how I do it. That's how you do it. Got it. And then so walking and all that other stuff, you did bring up, you know, like in the, use a military term. So are you still in communication with your military soldiers that you command that you lead through all that? Uh, I'm still in connection with my team. Yes. Um, though we haven't really you know, met in person in a while. We're, we're supposed to be, believe it or not, trying to do the, trying to do video conferencing um, for the next UTA meeting. But I mean, obviously we, we're limited into the topics we can discuss because it's not fully secure. Right, got it. So basically, if I'm understanding you correctly, you are just trying to find ways to get prepared for things after the, yes. you know, the shelter in place is lifted. You're putting things on the calendar, giving your customers right expectations, and you're still preparing for the arrival of Ethan. Yes, and, and the other piece of it is this, it's also given me an ability to sit down with my business and think about some of the direction that we wanna go with it, right? And I think, funny enough, I'm going back to my roots <laughs> from the military, right? To do uh, anti-terrorism force protection and design and that kind of stuff, right? And build buildings along those lines. So I said, wow, with everything going on now, I think it's kind of brought up, you know, lights are going off in people's head going, wow, we could be susceptible to this and that. So mm -hmm. one of the business lines that we're moving into a little bit is in doing a branch is um, underground cellars, wine cellars, AKA bunkers or whatever people want to call it. So oh. yeah, yeah. Who would have thunk, right? Um, and 
I have a friend who used to do C-burn, which is uh, chemical, radiological, biological, nuclear type stuff, right? So they used to respond to those things. So I think we're talking about pairing up and, and, and seeing if we could provide some consultation and even construction um, for, for anybody who's looking for those kind of things. And I know in the Bay Area, you know, just like insurance, people don't think they need it until they need it, right? That is true. Yep. And then it's the best investment in your life. It is the so, best investment. It, it is, is. It is. You, you, you can never have enough backup upon backup. It's when you don't have that backup is when you have your backup against the wall, right? Yes. Which is how a lot of people are feeling through this whole, you know, yep. show and play stuff. Yep. Yes. Uh, we, we're, I mean, with the background of what we have, I've kind of prepared for some kind of, some of this stuff. So we're not, we're not, we're not um, as worried as a lot of people. And, you know, I've got enough food here to, to last me for a while. And that's, that's just because we buy those 25 year MRE type stuff, which is disgusting. <laughs> but, you know, you never know, right? Earthquake can happen. Uh, uh, outbreak can happen. Anything can happen. And you should always be prepared for it especially if you have a family, you know, um, you're not prepared, then, then now you're reactionary. Once Ethan's born, do you think that you will, um, how do you think, what do you think life will be like for you once Ethan gets here come the end of April? Oh, that's a, that's a good question. I don't even know. I don't even know what's going to happen at the end of April, right? As in, um, with business and everything else, I just know that Ethan's going to be here and, and he's going to be my driving force to figure out whatever, whatever puzzle is laid in front of me with regards to economy, everything that will, he will be one of the reasons that I will find a solution. If that makes sense. Oh, it totally makes sense. It's, that totally makes sense. I sometimes believe that the reason why I even do the Earl Jones show and I do these videos is because I have nieces and nephews and cousins and I want to be the, I don't want the, I don't want my, the children, after me that were born to be looking towards some basketball star, some TV recording artist as the example of, you know, how to make it, right? I, I, I want to be that, that driving force. I want them to be like, oh, my cousin Earl or my uncle Earl or my, you know, yeah. well, I, I guess I'm a great uncle now. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and, and then now you have a plus one right here coming soon, right? Then we have, then we have a little Ethan coming. Yes, indeed. All right. So, Tell people how they can get in touch with you so they can start working with you. Because you still meet with people now via Zoom if they want to start, you know, planning a project, right? Yes, yes, I, I will. And so we've gotten creative on some of this. Um, thank goodness for everything like FaceTime. Um, and then if I have to, I will set up a Hangouts. And I've done a virtual Hangout walk. So we have a uh, client that Michelle actually connected us with. Um, in no, hold on, we got to give them some, some contact. So Michelle Harkoff, you guys saw her interview. She's the super mom that I interviewed a, a while back on March 31st. Um, and I'll put a link on this video so that you can watch that interview with her. Yes, so she connected us with a client, a customer in Burlingame who wanted to renovate the several bathrooms and in another bathroom in their ADU. So, it was on the onset of this COVID stuff. So we, um, we set up a Hangouts and did it through video and he came out with some tape measures and, and measured some areas for us. And, um, and now we are putting together a proposal. So, I mean, everybody's still preparing for things to pick back up at the back end and people still have their, their plans, right? They wanna change a, a, a garage to a, a room. They want to do an addition on their house. Um, you know, everybody seems to be still, I mean, they're aware of what's going on, but they're still projecting for what's going to happen like all, uh, right. when the, when the negativity ends, I'll say that, not, not all ends. But negativity. Yes. Now, how do people get in touch with you? Okay. So, uh, I have a website, www.apogee, A-P-O-G-E-E, -E, and then C as in charlie.com. So that's a web. that's where we could do it. Or you can give me a call at 650 uh, and there you have it, people. And thank you so much for joining the, uh, the Earl Jones Show. People, I'll put all of his contact information at the bottom of this video. Now, um, here's somewhere you can click, you know, subscribe. I think it's on this side, or is it that side? Just click subscribe, and then that way you'll be notified when we do another amazing interview with another entrepreneur in the Bay Area. 
Um, and then reach out to Edward if you have projects for your home, you want to, you know, because trust me, he's military. And so he's, you know, committed to doing the very best. What was it? Aim High Air Force? That's oh, the goodness, goodness. <laughs> no, I think, I think, I think, I think it's all because we, we are, we have uh, some level of degree of OCD-ness, <laughs> which is good, <laughs> right? Um, and, and also, if I may, I'd like to, I'd like to thank you for the interview today. Earl is, is absolutely excellent. And he is a guy that will find you the answers that you need to the questions that you have. Um, I know he's, he's helped my business many times when I have asked him questions about builder's risk, for example. What, what does that mean? What do we do with it? So he's allowed me to open up an avenue to my customers that, that they weren't thinking about before in order to keep themselves safe during the construction. Please feel free to reach out to me, even if you don't want to do work with me. And if you want, if you have any questions, and I can kind of give you a little bit of a, an idea of what it takes to get from A to Z with regards to whatever your vision is. And of course, if you do any construction, don't forget to check with Earl about that builder's risk because that's very important. Okay, now you open up this can of worms. So let me just tell you people. So <laughs> builder's risk is a type, it's an insurance policy that covers a, a, a major renovation and or project, right? Because a lot of people think that if I knock down the wall, to my house, my homeowner's insurance covers it, does not. Um, and so builder's risk comes in that, you know, doing that construction project where if Edward's liability insurance is not, you know, at fault for the damages or if somebody steals something while you're in the middle of that project or the project catches on fire and Edward's not at fault, the builder's risk can pay for the value of the project. Um, it's relatively in, um, it's invaluable uh, because again, there's not always black and white as to whether or not the contractor is at fault. And while you're waiting to find out if the contract is deemed at fault, builders risk could come in, pay for the con pay for the project, and so you can keep things moving. Um, but any project that you're doing, I, I'm just gonna be blunt because Edward brought it up. You should always check with your insurance company to find out if you have coverage and nine times out of 10, you don't. You just honestly don't. I don't care who it's with. You don't, especially if you're exposing the walls, the out, the walls to the outside, or you're adding on square footage. Even if you're taking out a kitchen and a bathroom, you probably will not have coverage. So find out. All right. Now, with that being said, click like, click share, subscribe, get the word out. You know, reach out to Edward for your projects. I promise you. He will blow you away with the level of detail um, and because he believes in measure four times cut once, not measure twice cut once. <laughs> I think it's that, it's that military because, you know, because I don't know, most people know that I was in the army, right? And the military teaches us to be very, very thorough because, you know, one mistake could cost, you know, can have huge repercussions. So I you know, get it. And Edward, I want to thank you for your service. I want to say, I appreciate the fact that you have taken on the mantle um, and continue to defend these great United States. So thank you to you and your soldiers. Um, and with that being said, you guys take care. Bye. Bye.